Hey everybody, it's Sandra Deluxe and today we're doing this glowy, everyday, natural, for me, glam. You gotta figure out what your natural is. This is proven control for me. But this is kind of like my everyday type of thing, other than the lashes. I thought I would compromise on the lashes. I did very natural lashes today. Usually I'll wear pretty big ones as part of my everyday natural beat, but I was like the glow for show. So if you want to see how to get the look, then stay tuned. First thing, because my lips are so dry, I've been really loving the Bite Beauty Agave Lip Mask, and it's really thick. And I, I actually have had it before, but I never used it because it said lip mask on it. So I thought it was like a treatment you do at night, but I've just been wearing it as lip balm. Next, I'm going to take my Willa Henriksen Banana Bright Eye Cream because the holiday season has me celebrating lots and making me look terrible under my eyes. So I've been using this and I just feel refreshed. I think you're supposed to tap it, but whatever. And that just like totally brightens up around your eye. With natural makeup, I find that I like to do a little extra on skincare and the stuff underneath. I'm probably this is not going to be that natural. It's better to go a little extra on skincare and what you do to prep the skin rather than putting on a bunch of products. I want your canvas to be good as possible. Next, I'm going to take the Ulla Henriksen Truth Serum One Pump. It is more than enough. This is collagen boosting. It smells like creamsicle. So good. Put that on all over. I actually am just trying it right now, I'll let you know how I think it is. But I really like the eye cream, so I thought I might as well try something else. This serum is really popular. And of course, the OG of OGs, I'm going to take my Lean by Melanie Mills Rose Gold Body Radiance, which is what I like to use as my primer. Yes, it has the little reflecting bits in it that blur the skin, and you can use it to give yourself a little tan. That actually went on really smooth on top of the serum. Also, the Glee My Melanie Mills is moisturizing, but it's not oily, so people with oily skin say, oh, can I use this? Definitely. Because of the bond in it that makes it not transfer, it actually makes your makeup last longer, and I feel like it has a little bit of oil control in it. Then I'm gonna go into my Jouer Essential High Coverage Cream Foundation. It's matte, oil-free, and has hyaluronic acid in it. Give it a shake. And I'm using the shades Cafe, the darker one, and Caramel, the lighter one. I've been slacking on my tanning routine. I'm gonna start with a darker shade in my T-zone and then blend it out with a lighter shade. This, you only need one pump, and I am an aggressive foundation user, so I would try and like, if you can, get like half a pump out. That way I can blend the light on the outer edges of my face, like near my hairline and my neck, so I don't get that orange line, you know what I mean? And obviously we're doing it with our hands. So next I'm going to go in with the caramel, more truthful color of the two. Those pale ears. And I'm using a matte foundation because sometimes if you go too crazy with the shimmer, which I'm going to do, and you have a super dewy foundation, you can just look all wet or greasy. And I'm not trying to do that, so. Next I'm going to take my Urban Decay Medium Dark Warm All Nighter Waterproof Full Coverage Concealer. And uh, we're going to highlight a little bit. I'm not going quite as light as I normally would with concealer, but we're still doing the most. We're making highlighted little V's under our eyes. And down our nose. Center the forehead. Mm -hmm. Obviously that's going to get a fantastic finger blend. I really like doing stuff with my fingers just because it warms up to my body temperature and it doesn't move or settle. And that's something I always get asked is if I set my concealer and I don't because I'm already warming it up to my skin. I use products that are long wearing so normally they don't need to be set, especially for somebody who has dry skin like me. So it's not like I'm setting my foundation off camera, I just don't do it. If it's like a really oily concealer or foundation then I will, but I don't usually use those so I'm using the Hourglass Vanish Bronze Flash and Champagne Flash. So for the Champagne Flash, I'm going to go on the very highest points of my face. So far, this is good. It doesn't seem to be taking off my makeup underneath, but it is definitely mixing with my foundation. With the dark, I'm just going to go kind of a little lower, but we want to do the most. With the darker, I'll go on my brow bone too, just because it's not as intense. I don't want to look like I have horns or a shiny forehead. And guess what, friends? We're doing a finger blend with that too. This is really pretty. I usually hate stick highlighters because I feel like they take off all my makeup underneath, but this is beautiful. And it's just adding radiance over top of this matte foundation. Let's do a little bit of the top one too. 
I love it. So I'm gonna go in with my Dip Down Fluid Line by MAC, which is what I like to use when I have darker hair. The bob. I'm gonna use a spoolie to brush the leftover product in my brows out. You have to kind of do you when it comes to brows. Like for me, a natural brow is probably a way too much for many others. So this part, a little more freestyle, but I'm gonna show you how I do a more soft brow. So I'm just combing them up. And I always like to do strokes in the same direction that my hair grows to start. Usually the bottom ones grow upwards, the top ones grow down. Line the bottom, and I can see right on the top there where I want to connect it to the top. To soften it, I'm gonna comb it up again, and I'm gonna comb it back down to see where I wanna put the stripes on the top. I mean, I definitely went a little extra than planned. This side, I have a scar in it, so it's gonna be a little more tricky, but I'm gonna do my best. Then I'm gonna comb it through with the Tinted Brow Gel by Anastasia in Brunette. And I'm gonna take a little bit of the concealer just to clean up the shape a little bit because I said this was a natural brow. And if you need to darken your concealer, you can add a little bit of your foundation to it, if it is darker. Um, because I don't really want to look like I snatch my brows too much, more so to just have them cleaned up. I'm gonna go in with my 35i bronzer. This one's a lot softer of a bronze. This is the Morphe E7 brush. And I'm just kind of adding some warmth to my face as well as a little dimension. This has a finish that reflects light the same way skin does. So it's more natural. Sometimes if my brows are a little dark, I'll go over it with my bronzer, just lightly, and it lightens them a little bit. I always like to use a cooler color when I'm going in on my nose or in my crease, just because it can go quite warm on those areas, maybe because it's more oily than my face. So I'm using 35i, which is a little darker, to snatch the nose, and I really like to contour up here, because it just brings a lot of dimension to your eye space, otherwise it can look kind of flat. And then, once you've built up enough color there, you can just drop it down the nose to the tip. I'm gonna do a little in my crease too to warm it up. I'm not really trying to add too much shape, I just wanna add a little warmth. NARS released this really beautiful palette called the Wanted Palette, and it has a lot of really beautiful shimmery shades in it. So I'm like, that's the one. So I'm gonna get into this middle shade here, the brown. I'm gonna give my eye a little definition. And I always like to do my more matte shades first and then go over top with the shimmers so that the shimmers pop the most. And sometimes it's hard to create shape with a shimmery shadow. So having that matte backdrop will still give you contrast, but you still get all the sheen from the sparkles and you won't wipe out your shape. So I'm gonna take this bronze kind of shimmery shade and I'm gonna go just on the outer half of my lid and just ever so lightly underneath my eye just so those lashes look nice and long. And this is a metallic shade, so it's depth, but it'll move with you, so it's not going to be too intense, but you'll still get the shadow. Putting a little bit of shadow underneath your eyes can really open them up. So I'm doing all my darks first and they can appear to be dark, but I'm going in with really light shades. So I wanna make sure that enough depth is there so they don't look shapeless, you know. I'm gonna go into this really beautiful color here and that's gonna be lightly our lid color, heavily our inner corner color. And I'm pulling it up all kind of over. And the reason why we went lightly on that is because we're gonna go into this almost glittery wet shade. Like it's a sheer shade but I think it's so pretty because it has this beautiful glitter to it. I'm gonna put that on and it just makes it look kind of wet. Mostly in the center, but I wanna flick a little bit everywhere. To intensify it a bit, I'm just gonna take my finger and do it. Just do a light coat, really tap it on with her finger. Mm. Those are pretty eyeshadows. Next, I'm gonna take this Becca Illuminating Blush called Tiger Lily. Same idea, really big brush and soft movements. Just to add a little bit of color. Obviously, we're gonna do the most with the glow, so I'm gonna go in with the Bobbi Brown Bronze Glow Highlighter to go over top of that beautiful sheen we set our skin with, just to uh, take it to that next level. We're going for it. 
I'm feeling like a little bit more of a pinky blush might make more sense than the peach, but you can barely see it. So I'm gonna go in and do the Huda Beauty Harmony lashes, which are little individies, but like in strips. Usually when I do individuals, I like to use tweezers just so I can control them a little bit better. Put a little glue. And I'm just gonna stick those down as close as I can to my lash line. And I'm doing this before mascara because I wanna use the mascara to blend my lash and the fake lashes together. I'll just leave it the three. There's four pieces, but it's just gonna be too much, I think. So these lashes came out with the Easy Lash collection. Personally, I think strip lashes are easier. Some people think uh, individuals are easier, so it's all like what you like to do best. But these are definitely very natural. So I'm gonna go in with the It Cosmetics Mascara Superhero. It's very extra. I've never really cared for my top lashes. And this makes your top lashes look gigantic. This just looks like, makes it was gonna make it look like I grew these. And just like with any mascara, I like to do the most, let it dry, do the most on the other eye, and then come back and even do more on the side that's dried. A lot of times during the day, like I don't really wear lipstick, I wear gloss or lip balm and to add a little color if I have my blush in my purse, I'll put a little bit of that on my lips. And then I'll put my lip balm over top of it. This is the one we used in the beginning. That's, uh, that's pretty much it. I think we're done. That's very extra for a natural tutorial. That's why we're here. Fresh, radiant, delicious even. So thank you guys so much for watching. And don't forget to share, subscribe, and follow. Love yourself. Stay pretty. And I'll see you guys again in the next video. Take care. Woo! <laughs>